about that slow aging process is to is a, all about what you put in your mouth, right? And low body fat determination. And I'm saying here, just to be clear scientifically, where a male's body fat goes above fifteen percent, we start to see abnormalities in the blood tests, testosterone, estrogen, inflammation, insulin resistance. Accordingly, as the body fat goes from 15 to 60 to 70 to 20 to 25 to 30 to 35, you see worsening of those parameters. And when a woman's body fat goes above 25%, as the 26, 28, 30, 35, perhaps again, we have trouble. We have to maintain a high muscle to fat ratio if one live a long time. And the muscle to fat ratio measured in your body is proportional to your risk of dementia and how many brain cells and memory cells you lose as you age. Yeah. 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 Really? <laughs> I'm saying that your body fat analysis doesn't only determine how long you're going to live, but it also is incredibly accurate indicator of aging of the brain and your risk of memory loss and dementia as you age. Yes, that's right. So you're in school, right? Didn't you guys know how the American population can't lose weight no matter what they do? They have to take drugs, certainly, because they can't lose weight eating unhealthy, low nutrient and food. The body's going to become, a, you know, wanting to get your calories. You should be normal body level. It would be a goal if you weren't overweight the entire world. So be something wrong with you. Matter of fact, what percent of the American population is overweight? What do you think? Hey, but yeah, okay, some of you were saying 80 because the American health authorities tell us 77%. They see, you know, our overweight used to be 66%, now it's 75%. But that's not correct because they use BMI 25 as the demarcation line between normal weight and overweight. And we know all along with societies that be much long of individuals, be much of 23, not below 25. And the max and max ones can be my males below 22 and for females below 21. If I use the permissive BMI of 23, which is funny, this is not, then we have 89% of the Americans. That makes 11% of the Americans be my low 23, which is not ideal, but it's below 23. And if we look at that 11% with more detail, uh, what's really, we find that. The vast majority of them, about 90% of that 11%, are sickly people who smoke, who smoke cigarettes or alcoholics, have chronic illnesses, cold cancers, immortal immune conditions, depression, or some um, digestive problem keeping them thin. They're not thin because they're not having normal weight because they're healthy, that are normal weight because they're unhealthy. If they were healthy, they'd be overweight. If you eat American foods, then you'd have to become overweight. What is something wrong with you? You found us? It's only 2.4% of Americans that have a BMI below 23 because they exercise regularly and eat healthy. Well, 2.4%. And that, Mr. So when we do studies and we look at people of normal weight, they may be sicker than people that are moderately old. This is how that social movement that I never want to call it healthy at any weight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> healthy, no matter how many packs of cigarettes you smoke. It's okay. Healthy, no matter how much heroin or cocaine you snort. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that movement. Perhaps. Healthy, no matter how much cocaine. Healthy. Healthy amount of drugs you take. I don't further tell. Like blood pressure is perfectly normal. I'm on ten drugs. So my blood pressure. I mean, healthy <laughs> don't. You only told this person that the number of medications you require to control your blood pressure is a measurement to be a risk of cardiac death. It doesn't matter what blood pressure is. Matter which medication you need to control. It. You never had medications, and doctors be forced to make people exercise, lose weight, eat healthier, and get the blood pressure. That would solve the blood pressure. That is what the medication become. Permission slip, the prescription beds, the permission slip, and the doctor is the enabler 
And that has no effect on people. They just pay people to keep eating on healthy. So we did that. I always say, I don't look at doctors. I don't put myself. <laughs> I get nervous just looking at myself in the mirror. <laughs> See that? You just went five years long. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so to review, we give some binding temperature, we colder in the winter time, you're more tolerant to the heat, we blow the thyroid function. Don't forget, in the normal range of thyroid function, in the lower half of normal, you have half the heart attack rate and reduced risk of irregular heart rate as atrial fibrillation, atrial fib, compared to people in that upper half of well, hypothyroidism, medications to the thyroid, right? We should be over its head. We have to drive your TSH to the lungs. We still want to be at the level of the myocardites and you know, within the normal range. That's a little advanced. Well, it's not that important to know that. But just to give you an idea that it's better than a slower medical not late and lower thyroid function. You know, you go to this anti aging doctor who has some healing with overweight people in bad diets. So you want extra thyroid medication. So rev up your metabolism that you lose weight for and you drive your car, please be it's not doing service Then he's doing what you he's pushing your metabolic and in the higher and aging more faster so you can keep your body rate a little lower so you can sleep walk extra calories. It's not the like you can do. So it says here, for every hundred calorie increase in metabolic rate, the risk of death increases by 25.